Hello everyone, welcome to PiyushMalik.com and today we are going to discuss something about uh, ocular ultrasound or eye ultrasound. Now, why do we need to do this? First of all, in recent past, one very interesting observation has been noted from MRI finding of a optic, optic nerve seed diameter that MRI finding of optic nerve seed diameter correlates very well with the intracranial pressure. Now if the optic nerve seed is big, <coughs> the, there is a chance that uh, there is intracranial hypertension due to trauma or benign intracranial hypertension or any chronic cause. Now, now ultrasound can keep the same finding without those expensive cost of MRI. All right, we can see the optic nerve, optic nerve seed. Now, a value of point, uh, five point eight millimeter has been linked, or more has been linked to increase intracranial hypertension in adult. Okay, so if somebody's optic nerve seed diameter is more than 5.8 millimeter in the correct clinical context so you are you are in the right path okay okay so uh, basically uh, there are lots of other uh, advantages like foreign body vitreous hemorrhage retinal detachments even the consensual uh, light reflexes when the, there is a big black eye swelling, we cannot uh, find, we cannot know those, uh, cannot open the other eye to see the whether the other side people is uh, reacting or not. Just simply putting a probe, you can uh, see the pupillary constrict, constriction on the opposite eye by the ultrasound. No need to open that. In, in fact, in that condition, you cannot open that eye. Now, ophthalmic artery is a intracranial structure which can be three which can be seen through optic uh, or ocular ultrasound so if it is seen then the transcranial doppler whatever pulse wave velocity we are getting from the ophthalmic artery is directly a, 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 a uh, findings from intracerebral structure right so uh, simply uh, ophthalmic artery blood flow pattern can give a fair idea about what is happening in uh, uh, inside the brain. So let's go how to do it. We'll discuss all these parameters one by one in future. But this is how you do it. You put a linear probe. Uh, it's a linear probe which has a high resolution and you put it over the eye simply and the midpoint of the eye without giving much of pressure what you need is a thick copious amount of gel and uh, and connectivity between these two you do not need to give any pressure all right so this is how you should do it an indicator should be towards the nose as a just for an uh, on a consensus okay this is what you are going to see this is a small video clip so you have to see the optic nerve and optic nerve seat and inside these two there is CSF a thin line of CSF you can see that's what you are seeing in the lower corner of the sc screen uh, uh, you, you 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 have started uh, seeing those optic nerve uh, and all around uh, uh, that uh, there is uh, some you know thin lines they are the CSF area from one point to other how do you measure it I'll just go to the next slide uh, to see it. Just see it carefully. Optic nerve and optic nerve seat. You can see it very clearly that is a delineation. So inside the seat to inside seat, you have to measure. Like this. This is the measurement taken. You see the left uh, upper corner of the screen. It's written uh, 0 0.3 centimeter or 3 millimeter. This is, means that you have to take the distance of optic nerve seat diameter from the origin or you can say end point of the optic nerve optic nerve so from 3 centimeter depth why is that because consensus is that you have to measure 
the optic nerve 3 millimeter below its origin all right so there you can see the next uh, point in the left of the uh, upper corner is 0 0.54 so this is the diameter at 0.3 centimeter below from the origin of the optic nerve all right so this is everybody has to uh, measure it now this is how you do the measurement now it's a very interesting thing now you can see the papillary edema no need to you know struggle with your this thing somebody is saying there is papillary edema somebody is saying there is no uh, ophthalmologist not available so this is what a very clear picture of papillary edema you can see and you see the measurement papillary edema with 0 0.6 centimeter that means 60 i mean 6 millimeter of uh, optic nerve diameter this was a known case of intracranial hypertension I mean intracranial raised intracranial pressure post traumatic so we know the case so this is what we followed up giving mannitol it got down so you know uh, it's a point of care ultrasound uh, you can uh, you can use it whether your treatment response is there or not right so uh, quickly uh, uh, what are the wrong way and right way of uh, doing optic nerve see that there are six pictures are there only E is the correct one the down middle part okay you see there is optic nerve has been seen here clearly and optic nerve sheath has been also seen clearly what's wrong in next picture that F is you see the anterior chamber and the lens you know the if we concentrate on anterior chamber it's getting compressed so the, uh, the operator uh, applied some extra pressure which is not uh, uh, advisable and uh, you see everywhere in C there is no clear optic nerve uh, uh, visibility only uh, so there is no point of measuring anywhere uh, I mean to say there is a correct way of doing it and uh, don't uh, start predicting the optic nerve seat from the first examination do some 1015 correlates with CT scan and then you can go ahead with your uh, findings uh, later on okay you will become better very very quick learning curve is there but you have to correlate clinically and uh, CD scan finding while you are learning it now this is you do not need to learn very interesting uh, slide, uh, uh, video you see uh, uh, this patient came sudden onset uh, onset of uh, blindness on the left or right eye I don't remember but even I could diagnose this that this is retinal detachment I have never seen my life okay so I just put the eye uh, ultrasound probe we found this some vitreous hemorrhage with complete retinal detachment the ophthalmologist was very happy we, you know uh, when he came we we already had a uh, diagnosis on now as I said in old age patient when the bone is calcified skull bone I mean to say uh, you cannot uh, do a TCD examination because it's calcified bone ultrasound beam does not travel uh, I mean it, it produces a shadow now eye is a window to the brain brain and now ophthalmic artery is a part of brain uh, the blood flow pattern in the ophthalmic artery as you see here uh, can uh, give us a fair idea about what is happening inside the brain now we know that when the uh, intracranial pressure goes very high like you know on the verge of herniation or coning uh, the diastolic uh, uh, blood flow goes down on uh, in, 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 in prior to brain death period the diastolic reversal occurs so this is where we uh, try to find out a sweet spot where there is a pulsatile, pulsatile ophthalmic artery you can see it left to the uh, optic nerve so once uh, that uh, pulsatile structure is seen i will put a also a doppler over there we'll talk about doppler in a uh, future podcast how to use them so you get a curve like this so uh, he, here is a systolic peak and diastolic trough so you know each uh, intracerebral structure has a velocity and depending upon the velocity we we can predict what is there, whether there is a vasospasm, in, uh, whether there is a mm, I don't know, uh, stenosis, or uh, whether there is a stroke, or whether there is a bleed, or all those things in the major arteries like middle cerebral artery. Uh, uh, 
uh, we can we can we can get to know in TCD. We will have a separate uh, podcast on TCD for sure. Now, thank you very much. Uh, hope this will help uh, some of the guys who are interested in ocular ultrasound. And uh, I have been doing it for quite a long time. Now I am getting a referral from different uh, patients of headache to rule out, you know, whether that is a, uh, once the ENT doctors, they could not find any cause, CT scan becomes normal, they send the patient to me, whether there is something intracranial or not. I mean, the benign intracranial hypertension where there is no, you know, obvious thing. So this is a functional dynamic thing. You can see what is happening, you know, combination of transcranial Doppler and intra, uh, I mean, ocular ultrasound. Uh, is there to stay and it has a lot of potential. Thank you very much and register in uh, uh, piyushmalik.com to get uh, newsletters and probably uh, very soon only registered member will uh, uh, will will, uh, will be able to access uh, uh, the website. Thank you very much again.